Now we will take a synapse and then we'll first talk about the structure of synapse and then see how the conduction takes place across it. So a synapse is actually a close proximity area between the two neurons. So it is actually a close area or we can say proximity area between the exon between exon and bulb of one neuron and dendrite of the other dendrite of the other and there is a space between these two the space can be less or more depending upon that space and how is this conduction going to take place across this these two neurons we classify neurons into two categories one is called chemical neurons or sorry chemical synapse and the other is known as electrical synapse as the name tell us in chemical synapse means the conduction from one neuron to the other through the synapse is taking place with the help of secretion of a chemical and these chemicals are known as neurotransmitters neurotransmitters whereas in case of an electrical synapse the impulse is going to jump from the exon end membrane to the membrane of dendrite as it as this uh, impulse travels on the nerve so it travels in the form of the ions or we can call it as charge and the basic difference why this uh, takes place in this form by movement of charge and here a chemical is required because the space between the two neurons is more in case of chemical synapse and less in case of electrical synapse the two ends exon of one and dendrite of the other are so close to each other that the impulse can jump from one that is exon to the dendrite membrane exactly same as it jumps in case of a saltatory conduction that is from one node of ranvier to the other whereas here the distance between the two is more so there has to be some chemical which helps in this process we will uh, compare these two later after we understand the chemical synapse and its functioning first so we will draw and understand chemical synapse first so in chemical synapse there are three things in electrical also the same three things but with a difference so here this structure which we are drawing is the end part of the exon we call it exon end bulb and there is a part of dendrite that is of the other one so this membrane that we are drawing this is the dendrite part of the other neuron so this is dendrite and this is the exon end bulb this space between these two is called the synaptic cleft synaptic cleft and in case of chemical synapse this gap is 10 to 20 nanometers and as i said we'll compare it when we are done with this structure in case of electrical synapse this space is very very less it is 0.2 nanometers and here it is 10 to 20 nanometers so there is a gap now this is the synaptic cleft the membrane before this gap that means we are talking about the membrane of the exon end bulb it is known as presynaptic thick membrane and the membrane of the dendrites is would be called post synaptic membrane inside this exon and bulb are vesicles 
These vesicles are circular structures which are filled with neurotransmitters. These vesicles are known as synaptic vesicles. So this is one synaptic vesicle. Each vesicle is filled with a neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter can be acetylcholine, it can be adrenaline, depending upon the type of the neurons we are talking of. So here, normally one synaptic vesicle contains about 2,000 to 10,000 molecules of neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter molecules. Each vesicle contains these. Now, few more important things about this pre and post synaptic membrane. Pre synaptic membrane has voltage gated calcium channels. So here there are calcium channels and these calcium channels they operate according to the voltage. So when the impulse is going to come here these calcium channels will open or close depending upon the voltage. So this structure which we have drawn here are voltage gated calcium channels and these calcium channels are present on presynaptic membrane. Post synaptic membranes have sodium and potassium channels. These are called ion channels. So this is say sodium or potassium channel here. And let us draw one with a different color that is sodium channel. So here are sodium and potassium channels. So this is sodium channel. These are called iron channels and calcium channels are known as voltage gated channels. Calcium channels are here also but their number is very very less. One more very important thing which is on the post synaptic membrane. Post synaptic membranes have some receptors also. These receptors are chemoreceptors. So these structures are chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors are the ones which are going to receive and attach to the neurotransmitter. They are going to bind to neurotransmitters. So this is the structure part. It is as we defined it, it's a close proximity. The two neurons are very close to each other. They, they are not connected. There is no protoplasmic connection between the two cells. This is the end part of one neuron. This is the dendrite part of the other neuron. The end part of exon is swollen and it is known as exon end bulb. In the exon end bulb there are many uh, vesicles. These are filled with neurotransmitters. We call them synaptic vesicles. Presynaptic membrane has calcium channels. Post synaptic membrane that is membrane of dendrite. It has sodium channels potassium channels and these are ion channels and it also has receptors. These receptors are special protein molecules to which the neurotransmitters are going to bind. And this gap between the two structures that is between exon and bulb and the dendrite is known as synaptic cleft. In case of chemical synapses, this synaptic gap or cleft is synaptic cleft is 10 to 20 nanometers whereas in case of electrical synapse it is 0 0.2 nanometers that means they are very very close to each other as compared to the chemical synapses. This is one difference that we have seen here after understanding the structure part. Now once we know the structure then how this conduction is going to 
take place. So when it comes to conduction, the neurotransmitters will be released from the exon. They will be received by the dendrite and that is why the conduction of impulse is going to be from exon to the dendrite of the other neuron. If you remember when we were talking about various types of nerves, we made a diagram that if we represent a neuron like this, this is the cell body, this is the exon and these small processes are the dendrites. So dendrites are going to receive the stimulus, exon is going to take it away. Again, here if we draw another neuron, so exon will send the impulse away from the cell body and dendrite is going to take it. And this direction is because of this arrangement. Neurotransmitters are secreted by the exon end bulb and the receiving protein that is these receptors they are on the dendrite membrane and that is why the impulse cannot go in the opposite direction because here there is no chemoreceptor and in case of dendrite there is no neurotransmitter. So after understanding this structure now let us see how the conduction of impulse takes place through this synapse.